like to introduce our guest soloist today. His name is Luke Ballot, and I had the pleasure of working with Luke at Barbara Ingram, even before he got to Barbara Ingram. So we worked in summer programs for several years, and he uh, was ready to be in uh, a, a show when we got closed down, and uh, we were all real sad about that. But uh, he's growing up. <laughs> Voice has changed a little since I had him last. Uh, but I've uh, enjoyed working with him, and he is uh, going to be singing my father's favorite hymn, His I Love. Amazing. Thank you, brother. And <laughs> welcome to Benevoli United Methodist Church. Hey, how you doing? Wow. That was a welcome. <laughs> welcome. Are we good now? Ah, they were uh, adjusting for the audio uh, whenever they were doing for the music. So that's why the microphone was a little, a little up there. Well, this morning, good morning. Welcome. And I am Pastor Suzanne. And we welcome those who are watching online. Let us know that you're watching by saying hello and type your name in. Uh, but I want to first uh, make some announcements this morning. Just a reminder that the youth group is not going to be meeting this, mo this evening. Uh, we are not going to be meeting this evening. So mark the calendars for December 5th. December 5th, the youth group are going to meet. 
and we are going to have a gingerbread making contest. So get them skills ready to go. I've never built a gingerbread house, so I might need some tips because those youth are going down. Okay, it's on. It's on. <laughs> but anyway, um, also, uh, if we have some events this week, of course, Thanksgiving is coming up. And uh, we are not offering a Thanksgiving service this year. Um, however, we are still celebrating the season of Thanksgiving together. Um, is there any other announcements that we need to bring forward this morning? I thought Miss Kathy would raise her hand. Go for it, Miss Kathy. Absolutely, yes. One more slot to uh, volunteer to bell ring uh, for the Salvation Army. And if you are interested in that, there is the sign-up sheet is right out front here. And uh, let Kathy know if you have any questions. But thank you to all who have signed up already. We're looking forward to it, uh, going out there to make some noise. Any other announcements to bring to the good of the order? Yes, John. Um, trustees will meet November 29th. That's trustees? Trustees will meet November 29th, 7 o'clock, here in the overflow room or over in the conference room. Just show up. <laughs> Trustees know where they're going. All right, friends. Well, with that, let us go into our time of worship together. Let us stand as we are able and join in the call to worship. You can follow along in your bulletin or follow along with the words on the screen. Either which way, let us worship our good and gracious God. With grateful hearts, we gather to worship. We give God thanks and praise. With open minds, we listen to the needs of others. We give God thanks and praise. With outstretched hands, we serve one another. We give God thanks and praise. With our all our being, we will follow Jesus Christ, and we give God thanks and praise. We do indeed. Let us sing, He is Exalted, in the Faith We Sing book. It's the black book there in your pews. It's on page 2070. The words will be on the screen for your convenience. <laughs> He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, the ever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall be. This morning is Christ the King Sunday. It's the end of the liturgical calendar of the church. Basically, it's our New Year's Eve party. It's the time we celebrate the whole reason that we come to faith, and that is to celebrate Christ, Christ the King. The church calendar always starts off with the birth of Jesus, and that is where our Advent comes in. And next week, we start our Advent so Christ the King Sunday is a time of accumulation. It brings together why we are disciples in Christ. And what better and fitting way than to recall the creeds that we adhere to. And those creeds include things like the Nicene Creed as well as the Apostles' Creed, which we are going to recite together because this is the epitome of our faith. You know, this sort of kind of makes our declarations out there like, who do you believe? What do you believe? Well, this is what we believe. So let us join together and recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried, and he ascended into the dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, how many of you had to memorize that when you were younger? How many of you have yet to memorize it as you're older? <laughs> how many of you recognize we for forgot the first part? <laughs> yeah, there we go. I believe in Father, the God, Father Almighty, King of Heaven and Earth. Absolutely. You know, it's okay. It's okay to not get all the creeds down and, and, and to get them all, crack them in here. Because what's important is that we understand what those creeds mean. And we understand what it means to believe in God the Father. Now this, of course, as Apostles' Creed was created way after the fact when Jesus was on earth. It was whenever the first church was gathering together and trying to understand what it meant to come to faith. What their religion meant to them. What it meant to worship God. And to this day, we're still making adjustments to these creeds to help us understand how to worship God. And uh, the language will be different each time that you hear it in some situations, in some denominations. But the important part is that we do believe in something, and that something is God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in Jesus Christ. And that's what we celebrate today on Christ the King. All right, that's my little spiel for you. There's your sermon. I'm done. Right? <laughs> Quick sermon today. Thank you. Okay. Well, let us get into our uh, worship here with prayer, and let's lift up our joys and concerns that we can give glory to God for, as well as give um, concerns for. So, Miss Rui. Praise God to hear good news from Sally Barnhart's daughter, Debbie. After three operations, she is doing well. And we're going to continue to pray for her and for her healing as well. Kathy. It is a joyful thing, and if it was uh, for anyone who was up, what was it, on Wednesday or Thursday, we had that lunar eclipse, and if you were able to see, it was a magnificent sight, but the moon has been very bright, too, the past few nights. God's creation is just glowing this time of year. It's, it's my favorite time of year. <laughs> Other joys, concerns that we can lift up. Yeah, Luke. It's your dad's birthday today? Oh my gosh, he just called you out. I called you out, my brother. Well, happy birthday. And and you know what? I, I think we, could we sing you happy birthday? Because he just opened the door and I'm just going to step right through. Uh, so J his name is Jason and we will sing happy birthday to Jason. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jason. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, brother. Man, he even got harmony on his birthday. Yeah, that is great. That's a <laughs> Oh, God bless you. Well, welcome. Welcome to Benevola. What a way to welcome through a birthday greeting, right? <laughs> Uh, Chuck, yes. We have some concerns. Um, the first one is Mark the Baker. He's dealing with some uh, possible brain cancer and killing his own little son. So we don't want people to hear from him anymore. It's very hard news. And then Mary Ellen's brother is in the hospital. He had a different stroke. We don't know who that could be. We knew the doctor said it was him. And uh, so that's the last one. Anna Farney, who uh, is a total doll. 
Absolutely. Uh, we'll continue to pray for uh, Anna as she is going through her physical therapy. And praise God, she's able to sit up on her own and uh, is working toward it well. Uh, Mary Ellen, what is your brother's name? Jim. Jim. We, will, we will hold Jim in prayer. Yes, God's hands is holding this all, and uh, Jim has is, is suffered a stroke, uh, but we know God is with him, and God is with the medical team, as well as surrounding you, my sister, and, and also prayers for Marsha Baker, who is going through brain cancer uh, and diagnosis and treatments and things, and we just continue to pray for Marsha. Absolutely. Travel mercies for all of those who are going around this uh, Thanksgiving and uh, going to see family and about and about. Uh, Janet, yes. On Tuesday, Ad is going to have... <laughs> she might forget to take you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Ad will try to break you out, uh, but Ad, we will be in prayer for you on your surgery on Tuesday as well as for your family, too, as they come alongside you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I'm praying for those nurses and the doctors. They're going to need to, hold, like, bolt you down or something, but uh, God will be with you nonetheless. Gail, yes. We'll continue to pray for... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long trip of care to, to drive, but we'll continue to keep the burr hands in prayer. Um, if you recall, Denslow had COVID, and he was emeritus with COVID, and uh, he's now at Camp Hill at a facility for those who couldn't hear online. So our prayers are working, but let's continue to surround the family. Yes, Kathy. Those are, when it comes to planning and, and doing the good work of the Lord, it takes time. And um, I'm going to give praise to that, too, because every meeting that I have attended so far, um, eh, there's a few, but most of the meetings I have attended, so we have left those meetings with joy. We have left those meetings with hope and excitement, and that just gives me such you know, it, it's the Lord on fire, the Holy Spirit working, and uh, just just goes to show that we've got life in this church, and uh, ain't no COVID going to put this life out, right? We've we've got so much ministry that's going on, and that we're doing together and working together, and that is for the glory of God. And when that is our focus, good things can happen. Amen. All right, friends. Well, let us center our hearts. And let us enter into prayer. Would you bow your heads with me? Good and gracious God, we just thank you for this beautiful day, this fall day, this day to come and to celebrate and to worship and to be in this space together as community. We may know the people who surround us. We may not know the people around us. But we do know, Lord, that you know who they are. And we know that we have something in common. We follow you. We are surrounded by your love, your embrace. You hold us, Lord. You gently move us. You, you give us wisdom. You bring us hope. And Lord, you do that all through your son, Jesus Christ, who we celebrate this day. And we thank you, Lord, for your son. And made a way to 
have a relationship with you, Lord, who, who challenged, challenged the authorities of his day, who came and walked this earth, Lord, so that your will could be done. Lord, there is so much to be done. There is so much hurt. There's so much strife. There is so much sorrow. There are things, Lord, that is out of our control. And sometimes, Lord, we try to control it. But, Lord, we just have such a difficult time giving it over to you. And, Lord, this day we offer it to you. Those burdens that have been holding us down. Those things that we have been struggling with this week, Lord. We know as the holidays come about and how celebrations come around, and it causes stress and tension. And Lord, on top of the stuff that we're already going through, we, we just don't know where to channel that. But this is our opportunity, Lord, to give it over to you. Remind us of your power, of your glory, of your might. May we feel that this day. We thank you for successful operations. We thank you for healing. We thank you for those who are able to celebrate life together and celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and things of those matters that we love to join in, in bringing to you. But Lord, we also have those things that are so delicate in our lives that we don't know how to handle those, those strifes that are coming along, those complications with health problems, those things that come unexpectedly, those medical emergencies, the surgeries that we don't know about, the healing that we want to happen but is not happening and we're just frustrated, Lord, to the jobs that we have lost, to the people whom we've had arguments with. to the leadership of this country, to the leadership and guidance in this world. Lord, we can't claim to know everything, but we place it all in your hands this day. And when we try to take it all back, Lord, and when we get fumbled with our words, remind us of the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We'll hear our scripture this morning, Miss Kathy. Good morning, Benevola. Good morning, Gabby. Today's scripture comes from the book of John, uh, chapter 18, verses 33 to, to uh, 37. I'll turn the light on. There we go. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. And Jesus answered, you are right in saying that I'm a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
<laughs> just take me another 20 minutes. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> God bless you. Well. Well, friends, will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of the word that you have given us this day. Help us to take this word and write it upon our hearts. This we pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, this is the last Sunday of our church year, as I mentioned. And uh, it's also the last Sunday of our sermon series that we've been going through, A Life That Matters. And uh, we've been talking about how um, living as a disciple matters, what it takes to live as a disciple. Uh, it takes generosity, it takes faithfulness, it takes truthfulness. Uh, and today it talks about belonging. And uh, the scripture that we had this morning kind of focuses on that scene. We usually hear it in the Easter season, whenever Jesus is brought to Pilate. And he's like, so are you a king? And Jesus is like, well, that's what you say I am. You know, that, well, that's my version of it. It doesn't really say that, but, you know, my interpretation of it. Uh, but before I get into that, I mentioned last week that I have a new addition to the house, right? All right. I got to brag because this is my baby. Aww. Kitty cat pictures. Yes, it's going to be that kind of day. I'm going to brag on my children, Okay. This is my child. This is my newest addition. This is Gracie, and that's Jax. But Gracie, Gracie Goose was found right out here on the drive here at Benevola. Somebody, <laughs> don't blame Bill. Bill just happened to find it. And uh, But Gracie was left here, and I uh, don't know her story, but I know it's ending with us, Jeff and I. Uh, but Gracie's doing great. That's her. She's all cleaned up. She's ready to go. Got her all the all the stuff that new kittens need. You can barely tell I had two hours of sleep last night. Well, that's Jax. That's his brother. And Jax was given to us. He's about two years old now. And he's a, he's a rambunctious little squirt, too. And they're getting along just famously. Uh, they are doing really well. Doing really well. And I don't have a picture of Harley, our dog. She's a mentor Australian. Uh, but uh, Harley is, is an older dog. She's 14. And uh, she is nearing the end of her life. And so Harley's putting up with the cats. And she's like, whatever. I don't have the energy for you right now. But the kitty cats, they like to spend some time looking outside what's going on and they're doing great with one another. But they're learning how to figure out life together. And that's where the sermon comes in, right? If you know anything about cats, they are territorial. Animals in period are territorial. Even humans are territorial. And the first time they met, Jax, my older one, was going, Who are you? <laughs> Get out. Cats do that. Especially if it's around food. These are, this is mine. Well, uh, before this picture was taken, Gracie was trying to see how far she could get with, get with Jax. See Jack's tail on the other side there? Jack's tail was, was wagging just a little bit because he knew his sister was coming around. I don't know if he picked it up or not, but he was sending off those vibes that I don't want to be messed with. But then as she came over, she, he was like, who are you? What are you doing here? What do you want? You're new here. And Grace is like, hey, you want to play? Want to play? Want to play? You know how kittens can be, right? Well, as Jax is switching his tail, Gracie tries to go after the tail. And, of course, what has happened? Jeff, back off. Don't make me uncomfortable. Get away. He did it three times. They didn't bring out his claws or anything like that. They behaved. Well, Gracie got the lesson. She said, all right, all right, I'll back off. But I'm going to come back later. You're not going to come sneak around. Pastor Suzanne, get to the freaking point already, right? It takes time to belong to a family. 
takes time to get comfortable with people who are different than you. Amen? It's, <laughs> why was that a little louder, Jeffrey? No. That's my husband, by the way. Um, there, it takes time to understand who strangers are. And that is where I feel comes today when we have Pilate and Jesus together. Pilate encounters with Jesus today in the gospel, and he asks, are you king of the Jews? In other words, who are you? Who do, who do you say you are? This is just one translation I'm getting through it. This is what God has spoken to me today. What he really wants to know is if Jesus is a threat to him, just like with animals. Animals are like, what are you doing here? This is my food. Are you going to take my food away? You're not going to do that. Pilate could be seen saying the same thing. Because who is Pilate? Pilate is a Roman emperor. He's not a Roman emperor, but he represents Rome. He is the authority because Rome is over the land at the time. They own the place. That's the guy in charge. Did he want to be there? Ugh, that's a sermon for another day. But he was on order from the emperor to be in the ruler of over where Jesus was at that time. And Jesus was being referred to as a king. So you can see where the authoritarian clashes are coming together. He didn't know, Pilate didn't know if he was, if Jesus was going to be a threat to his identity, a threat to his power, because this is Jesus. He was a backwoods boy. He didn't know him. Pilate didn't know who Jesus was. He could care less who that was. That man was below that's how others saw each other during that time period. So whether spoken or unspoken, cautious or uncautious, the concerns that trigger an encounter with another person, a different idea, a different belief, if something is new, that affects us. We have it whenever we meet people for the first time. You might have intimidation. You might feel threatened by another person's presence if you meet them for the first time. Or you might not really care. You go right all in. But like Pilate, we want to know what we have to do in order to defend our surroundings, in order to defend our kingdom, if you will. What do we need to defend the status quo? Are you going to come and change and disrupt my atmosphere? Think about it whenever you get a new pastor. Is the new pastor going to come in and disrupt everything that you know as a church community? So far, so good, right? <laughs> we do not want someone to mess with our self-identity. We don't want someone to mess with our values, our beliefs, our structures. They should not question our understanding of God, our understanding of ourself, our understanding of the world. Heaven forbid if you challenge me on something, I might come at you. We certainly do not want them taking away our power. We don't want people to take away our control. We don't want people to take away our privilege either or our comfort. Because that makes life difficult, doesn't it? And when those scenarios come in, that's what we experience. We have to work hard to keep our kingdom our status quo for each of us in check. And many of us have worked very hard to get to the place where we are right now, especially if you are a survivor of maybe abuse or a survivor of some kind of addiction. You've worked hard to get to the place where you are. Maybe there has been struggles, and you've worked hard to come along this way. Don't come and challenge my beliefs. And yet Sunday after Sunday, that is exactly what we ask for. We ask for the Holy Spirit. We ask for God to come and challenge us, whether we know it or not. We're not just gathering here for a fun. We're gathering here to hear from God. And sometimes we're not going to like what God has to say because it challenges us. We ask the very systems that could change us to change us. And we do that through the Lord's Prayer. When we say, Thy kingdom come, we are asking for change. 
Change that this world can be impacted. Change in the relationships that might be different. Change in our atmosphere. So Pilate was worried Jesus was going to take over. And spoiler alert, you know, he kind of did. <laughs> when he declared his purpose, Jesus said, I have come to bear witness to the truth. Now, how does that sound to a person who has power, who has authority? What truth are you talking about? Are you going to expose me? Is my kingdom going to fall? Christ came to bear the truth. Truth about living. Truth about faith. Truth about meaning and purpose. The truth about grace and reconciliation. This is the truth that Christ came to testify to. And everyone, everyone who belongs to the truth, Jesus says. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. In other words, those who hear will follow. Those who hear will have the change and experience transformation. Everyone who belongs. Now that might mean someone might not belong. You can't force belonging. But we must change the way we see and think and act and hear and speak. We challenge the status quo because the status quo must go. That could actually be a t-shirt, couldn't it? Let's get on that, right? We could sell that for a fundraiser or something. Status quo must go. Yeah, that's a bumper sticker way of thinking things. But it's true. There is a different way of living and a different way of being. And that's what the early Christians discovered through Jesus the Christ. That's what the disciples learned through Jesus the Christ. That's what the disciples taught to the early church. If Christ is king, then we are not. We have no authority. And the other systems and structures of power in this world, they're neither a powerful force. If Christ is king, those systems and structures are nothing. They are not determinative of our decisions about our encounters with one another. They don't determine whether I allow my neighbor to sit next to me or not. If we want to live a life that matters, then we ought to let our kingdoms of individualism and indifference go. Our kingdoms of fear, of prejudice, of resentment, we got to let that go. Our kingdom of judgment and labeling, it must go. Why? Because everyone who belongs knows the truth, and that truth is in Jesus the Christ. We must stop defending our kingdoms and saying and adhering to the status quo. You know what I mean by status quo, right? How making things the same, all of the institutes that we have, the things that seem normal to us. Really, in fact, they might not be normal. Just like with the cats. Jax thought he was the king of the world. He was the only cat that was there. Until, dun, 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 kitten comes along, challenges the status quo. Now, if Jax wants to create a kingdom and include this little one, he's got to change some ways. Get used to this new way of being and maybe hear what God has to say down through it, too. Now, I don't know if my cat believes in God or not. He reads all my sermons, so I'm hoping he does. I'll, get, I'll be working on the Apostles' Creed with him soon. That would be impressive. Call Jimmy Fallon right now. We'll do the pet's impressiveness there. But remember, the status quo must go. In defending our kingdoms, we tend to live as if the truth belongs to us. Just as Pilate thought the truth belonged to him. No. 
We live as if we know the mind of God when we put ourselves in that position. I hate to tell you, you're not God. Neither am I. <laughs> None of us are God. We know what is right and we do our best, but we are not God. And who is in and who is out, that is not for us to judge. What does my husband say a lot that I really enjoy? He says, don't judge me unless you're above me. Don't judge me unless you're above me. Because I'm not the judge. God is the judge. And that judge is basing things on truth, on Christ, through the truth. It's not up to us. We do the best we can, though. But in the moment that we are no longer listening to Jesus' voice, we become as deaf as Pilate. We become like Pilate. So our ears must remain open because the truth does not belong to us. Instead, we belong to the truth, and the truth is Jesus the Christ, the gospel that he brought and came alive in Christ on earth. Everyone who belongs, belongs to the truth. And only then will we be able to hear and listen to Jesus' voice when we can accept that status quo. If Christ is our king, then the status quo must fall. If we are disciples of Jesus Christ, then the status quo must go. If Jesus Christ is my king, then I'm not living by the world's truth. I'm living by God's truth. And I think that's a pretty good truth to be following. Don't you? May it be so. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity to brag about my children. My fur babies. Hey, you all might have physical kids and, and, and grandchildren and great grandbabies. I'm not at that point right now, but I've got fur babies. And they're the best. They're the best. Well, now is a time to offer our best to God, to give our gifts and what He so graciously has given to us. And we don't pass the plate around here, but we do have offering. Uh, the ushers will be coming through uh, with the plate, or we can drop it off as you leave or, or have come in. We also offer with our gift of song, too, and we are so blessed to hear Luke Blot come and sing another song for us. So please let us reflect on this message and receive this gift. Who's this?
God of majesty, you rule over all the universe in love. Bless these gifts that we bring you. May our whole lives reflect to the world that there is only one who rules us with love and compassion. In the name of your Son, the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us continue standing and close this morning with our closing hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King, found on the red hymnal on page 715. We're going to sing all the verses. Huzzah!
to withhold that truth, knowing that we belong to the truth and share that with others that we come in contact with through it. So with that, friends, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace knowing you belong in Christ.